is this the ultimate aircraft comparison? An electric A6B Prowler versus a Vans RV6A? Let's find out. Let's start with the most easy to compare thing, which is cost. Prowler's gonna cost you $86 million. You actually can't buy one. It was never exported. It was never sold to private parties as a national asset. But in theory, $86 million is gonna be the price tag you're looking at. Also, it's gonna cost you about $10,000 to $20,000 per flight hour to maintain it and keep flying it. And additionally, you're gonna be burning right around 6,000 pounds of gas per hour, depending on the type of flying that you're doing. In comparison, the RV6A that I have, I looked on Barnstormers and there were some that were similarly outfitted. The avionics weren't quite as nice, but they were coming in right around $100,000. I got my plane at $65,000 a few years ago, and you can find planes in that price range that are gonna be outfitted pretty nicely these days. So that's kind of the difference. No brainer in cost, it definitely goes in pure costs to the Vans RV6A. That said, in the Marine Corps, remember, they paid me to fly it. So even though the price tag on it's exceedingly high, I was coming to work every day being paid to fly the jet. So not quite a perfect comparison, but I think cost, pretty easy to say we have to give that to the winner, RV6A. Let's talk about speeds next. I think this is probably also pretty straightforward. In the Prowler, we would normally cruise at 300 knots indicated, somewhere between 23 and 28,000 feet is where we'd like to stay which would equate to roughly 450 to 480 knots on the ground. That's roughly seven miles per minute. And we would fly that uh, equating to 0.7 to 0.8 Mach, if you like Mach numbers. The Prowler could not break Mach straight and level, as in it couldn't go supersonic straight and level, but could break Mach in a dive. There's no top end speed limitation on the Prowler as long as you don't have stores, uh, as in some of our jammers, for example, had a specific airspeed limitation associated with those. But the jet itself did not have a max top speed you couldn't exceed. When we're flying other profiles, such as air-to-air -air tanking, that would be specific for the type of jet we're tanking from. Uh, as an example, if we're flying off a jet, we'd normally fly 260 to 275 knots. If we're flying off a KC-130, it would be 220 to 240, which in the Prowler is not comfortable. We much prefer to be greater than 250 knots and ideally 300 or more. The jet does not like to fly slow. Low levels, we would fly 420 or 480 knots, sometimes a little faster depending on the profile and how much fun we wanted to have on that low level. The Vans RV6A, conversely, does not fly nearly that quickly. I tend to cruise around at 160 to 180 knots, and the top end for the RV6 is actually 182 knots true. So it's very helpful now with modern avionics to have a true airspeed indicated on our displays, but that 182 is the top end, and that is in true. My plane at 1,500 feet on a somewhat cool day, which is good for aircraft performance, will top out straight and level at 177 to 180 knots indicated. So I think we have to give air speeds to the Prowler. So let's go next to maneuverability. And this one's not that straightforward to me. What is fun for maneuverability? What do we even mean by maneuverability in this case? So I'll try and walk through some of the things that I think about when I try to compare these two things. Again, a RV6A with a Marine Corps tactical jet. So I wanna start by saying the Prowler is not a superstar of maneuverability or performance up high. And that is in the 20s, uh, up into the 30s, and even in the low 40s, it is not a high performer. Down low, however, the jet is absolutely incredible. It's extremely agile, the engines perform fantastic, and there's some really interesting reasons for that. And I wanna note that when I came from T-45s in training into the EA-6B Prowler, I thought this jet is not gonna be maneuverable. It doesn't look super maneuverable. It, uh, it's huge. You could park a T-45 pretty much under the wing of a Prowler, and I was completely wrong. You get this jet into the low-level environment, and it is a great, super fun, super maneuverable platform. But why? Well, a big piece of that is actually the engines. And so if you start to think about a modern tactical jet engine, they normally have what's called a bypass ratio of about one to one. And what that means is, when you think about the way a jet engine works, some of the air is coming through the middle, going through the combustion section, and then being used to power the engine, and other parts are going around the outside of it. That's called the bypass. 
And so that one-to-one -one ratio means about half the air goes through the combustion section of the engine and about half the air goes around the outside through the fan section. And a comparison to modern airlines, you see those huge engines underneath the wing of a modern airline and those have a bypass ratio of greater than 30 to one, which means a very small portion of the air is going through the combustion section compared to most of the air going around the outside of that section. That produces better efficiency up high and if you ever heard a prowler, you know how loud it is. That's the reason the prowler is so loud. Because in the prowler, it is a no bypass turbojet. That is all of the air that goes in through the intake is going through the combustion section. There's no bypass. What that means functionally is down low, the jet performs very well and up high, it does not perform nearly as well. The RV6 is a very maneuverable plane. It's a 6G platform, which means six times the force of gravity. Super fun, very aerobatic, but when it comes to maneuverability, the nice thing about it is because the air speeds are slower and it's just a very easy plane to fly, and the more you fly RVs, the more you understand their flight envelope, you can maneuver into some really cool places. Flying around in Washington, an RV is great because as you're in mountain valleys, your turning radius is very, very small which means it's harder to get yourself into trouble as long as you plan ahead a little bit. Uh, you can turn in those valleys and get out of places that you put yourself into. You can also land at very small airports. It's a very maneuverable plane. And I think on balance, I'm going to have to give maneuverability to the RV6. Utility. What's the utility of the plane? Now this is again, it's a tricky one because you say, what does utility mean? If say we mean utility and how functional is it in different wartime scenarios, the Prowler is gonna win this one in spades. And that's not really fair because the RV-6 is not designed to be a wartime aircraft. So thinking in terms of other things, like how many people can it carry, how much cargo, uh, what's the utility if you wanna go someplace, this is the, the place where I think we can make a little bit of a comparison and start to give the idea of what's fun about a RV-6A versus what's fun about an EA-6B. So in the Prowler, we could fly with four people, one pilot and up to three ECMOs, which stands for Electronic Countermeasure Officers. Those are NFOs, Naval Flight Officers. So they're winged aviators, but not pilots. So we'd have one pilot and up to three uh, ECMOs in the plane. We normally would fly around with three people total, one pilot and then two ECMOs, one in the front, one in the back. That was kind of our normal configuration. And in terms of how much we can carry, there's not a lot of cargo space in a tactical jet. You can take your flight bag and stick it next to the ejection seat. And then there was a spot that they could drop a bay uh, and put some clothing into the avionics bay in the jet, which seems crazy the first time you see it, but that was the place where if we had to go on a multi-night uh, stay somewhere, we could put some things up into the avionics bay. So that's, about it in terms of what we could carry. Something else to mention for utility is on the Prowler we needed 8,000 feet of runway, takeoff or landing. That was the benchmark of where we would have a safe runway to land on. And then we'd land and fill it up with about 20,000 pounds of Jet A. So there's some specific things we needed versus with the RV, uh, I can really land that in roughly 500 feet or less. Uh, and also, you know, a thousand foot or 1500 foot runway is usually plenty depending on the terrain around there. So that opens up a huge amount of airports for the plane. We also in the RV6 have a baggage compartment behind the seats that you can fit a lot of stuff and I can carry up to one passenger. The other cool thing about the utility aspect is it's just somebody who I can talk to that day and say, here's how we're gonna fly this and get in the plane and go. Versus in the EA-6B, if we were gonna take a quote unquote passenger, so somebody who's not assigned air crew, they would have to go through a pretty long certification process to even be qualified to sit in the ejection seat and fly in the plane. So from a utility aspect, I think I have to pretty clearly give this one to the Vans RV. There's just so much more you can do with the plane it's designed to do these things such as carry cargo, go in and out of small airfields, and take people to experience the joy of aviation. Fun factor. This is the absolute hardest one to break out between the two because they're both so much fun in so many different ways. I had some incredible fun and some incredible flights in the Prowler from air to air refueling 
tons of flights on night vision goggles, which uh, is both fun and unfun, depending on how often you're doing it and how much your neck is getting sore, but that's a different story. You know, doing things like show of force passes in combat zones, literally supporting world changing events like the inauguration of Karzai in Afghanistan, more low levels than I can even count, much less remember. Uh, this was as a single ship, as a section, sometimes as a four ship or division, uh, flying over green forest, flying over desert, flying around low hanging clouds, flying in Alaska, flying with my buds in an $86 million jet. Like what a great time. Oh, and uh, landing on the aircraft carrier, both day and nighttime. That's pretty cool. And so the types of things I was able to do in the Prowler are just without comparison. It, it was such a cool experience to be able to get to do that. And I sometimes feel and joke that it's like I'm watching somebody else's life when I think back towards those times when I was flying the jet on almost a daily basis. But comparing that to the things I get to do in the RV, it, it isn't like the RV isn't a strong competitor here. You know, I still get to fly a lot of things like formation, uh, which is much more simplified in a plane like the Prowler because we're not running tactical missions. The world does go by in slow motion in comparison, but I can take the RV camping without any special paperwork. I don't have to go fill out a stack of operational risk management or ORM sheets in order to take my plane and go do something. I can just go do it. If I want to change locations, no problem. If I want to take a front flying, no problem. If I want to get away for lunch and head up to the San Juan Islands, can do. If I want to take my wife to go get food someplace, we're in. None of that's a problem. If I just want to get a sunset flight after work, I can. I can just head to the hangar and do it. And there's just a certain level of freedom with having the RV and owning a plane that you just don't get when your toy is owned by the generous taxpayers of the United States. And so there's some trade-offs. While you get much higher performance and you're flying a much higher end piece of equipment and it's your job to tactically employ that jet, it's a little different than when you own your own plane and, and you're deciding on what terms you're gonna fly, where you're gonna fly, and what you're gonna do. The super big fun factor about the RV is it's a super capable plane. It's aerobatic, it can pull Gs, you can fly with other planes without a problem. So in terms of pure flying, I have to say the Prowler is more fun. But when you wrap that up to what are the things you can do with it, how does having this airplane affect your life? Having the RV is just a game changer. It's changed the types of things I do for fun. It's opened up the world around me and things like going to get lunch in the islands is a big deal that you can do that. And going to a fly-in and meeting a bunch of friends on the weekend, that's a ton of fun and so, on balance, oh, it's tough. Don't get me wrong, the flights themselves in the jet are completely incomparable in terms of coolness, and those flights in the jet are so much fun. But what I have to say across everything, to include not having to stand duty to fly the RV, I have to say I think the overall fun factor is probably higher in the RV. Now, had I never flown the jet, and I had to pick between only flying an RV or only flying a jet, and that's all I could pick in my life, I would 100%, without question, pick flying the jet. That was what I wanted to do since I was, well, at least as long back as I can remember and probably before that. So if I had to pick one and say you can only fly one ever, it would have to be the jet. But if I had to say which one's gonna change my life overall in terms of ownership and having one and being a part of that community, I think the fun factor might actually be on the RV, but I'll acknowledge I'm biased because that's what I'm doing today. And there's a little bit of bias as well where I have to pay for the RV. And so I'm consciously making that decision versus in the Prowler, I was being paid to fly it, which does change things a little bit as well. Okay, what's the final verdict? Which is better, a tactical jet or an RV? Well, it's not fair, obviously. It's a completely silly comparison because one is exceedingly expensive and very limited and you actually can't get one even if you had all the money to buy one. They're national assets, they weren't sold, they're not sold to private parties, so you can't get one. But hypothetically, I think I would say if you have to choose and you can only fly one or the other, you gotta join the military and become a pilot. It's just the coolest thing ever. It's so much fun. I uh, had so many great experiences, you gotta do it.
and plus flying jets and the things you do in the jet and the level of complexity and the training is not even in the same stratosphere as it is in general aviation. Sorry, it just isn't. But today, what do I enjoy doing? Would I rather go back and be in a squadron and fly these jets or would I rather have the things I'm doing now where it's aviation on my terms? And I think I have to say the aviation on my terms is super, super compelling. So today, I would say that having the RV is probably the right way to go compared to flying the jets day to day uh, in my life. But I don't know. I still feel the pull to go back into aviation pretty regularly. So we'll see. Uh, I may find myself as a professional pilot again here in the future. So the overall punchline is I'm going to say if you are curious, definitely go buy yourself an RV or some other GA airplane, but if it's something less capable than an RV, you're really missing out.